Welcome to the Great Scottish Golf Adventures at Royal Aberdeen today, founded in 1780 by the Society of Golfers at Aberdeen, ranked ninth in Scotland and 63rd in the world. In 1903, King Edward VII conferred the royal favor upon the club. We are playing in three cities in six days, on eight courses. Our first city was Inverness, and we started with playing uh, Nairn Dunbar. A great course to get us started, and we followed that up the next morning with playing Castle Stewart, followed by Nairn. 36 on day two, and then we traveled to Aberdeen, and we played Cruden Bay. Next morning, we woke up and we played Trump, and now we are playing Royal Aberdeen. Royal Aberdeen is a true links course where hole one plays to the east, two through nine play to the north, and 10 through 18 play back to the south to the clubhouse. This hole has a couple of uh, bunkers by the green to protect the larger green and uh, three fairway bunkers to catch your drive. Doug's teeing off first on hole number one. This hole, this tee box is positioned in front of the window so everyone can see you drive adding to your first tee jitters. There I go. OMG, followed by Kevin, Seven, our low handicap at a four. I'm going to change things up a bit today and focus more on the course and a little bit less on the game that we're playing. I'll talk more about that later. Yeah, playing at Skechers and Blue. <laughs> yeah, thanks United and Logan Air because you still haven't delivered their clubs and uh, you're really kind of putting a damper on the whole deal. All right, here goes Jim hitting his driver. All right, Doug hits three. The first tee jitters uh, got him. All right, I got three hybrid from a long ways in this kind of wispy rough. Put enough club on it. All right, now I've got a seven iron punch. It is crazy, crazy wind. So I'm just trying to keep it down under the wind and uh, get it up on the green, which I did. Give myself a par putt. I needed more oomph on it than that. All right, Jim's got a par putt, and he makes bogey. So I've got a par. I was going to mark the ball, and Kevin let me putt, but I should have backed up and looked at it because this bogey putt does not go in, and I make double. The second hole is a natural par five. 549 yards, it's a number three handicap. You have to carry a grass area off the tee, and the wind is a factor on this hole. Down the right are some large sand dunes that uh, give you a false read on the wind as you play your second and third shots into the green. But down the left, you have the gorse. Either way, you got your challenges. Doug, after a bit of a wait, tees off on the second hole. Driver, waiting on the second hole is not a good uh, foreshadowing. I am hitting driver. Followed by Kevin playing in his with his rental clubs. He and Jimbo, thanks to United. There goes Jim. You can hear the beach in the background. Very nice hole. All right, I've got three wood from LAW. Not bad. I got uh, three wood from 197. You know, I didn't hit that well at all. All right, now I got uh, Sandwich, and the wind uh, oh. rears up and knocks over the GoPro. I have it set on the bottom uh, to keep it out of the wind, but uh, not effective. All right, I found a sand trap. I get out. All right, I got a bogey putt. But no, I make double. The third hole is a long par three, and at 202 yards, it's rated as the most difficult par three with a 13 handicap. Depending on the wind, this hole can be everything you have in the bag and more. Kevin tees off. First, we're playing a COP where you have a, a different partner for six holes, and on the first six holes, my partner is Jim 
is starting out strong today. Here goes uh, Doug. As you can hear the waves crashing in the back. I'm hitting three wood, and I don't get there. All right, I got a gap wedge punch. Whoa! And I shank it. Got Texas wedge. I got a bogey putt. And I don't make it, but thankfully my partner does make his, and uh, we win this hole. The fourth hole is a par four. It's the number one handicap despite its mild distance of 377 yards. The elevated tee shot brings the wind into play, making it even more difficult to hit the fairway, which is a must on this hole. Good luck finding a flat lie as you hit into a long, narrow green. All right, confessional. I changed the format today because this is the scorecard I came home with from Aberdeen with no scores on it. The blank one, not the one that, that kept everybody's scores in the, in the game we were playing that day. But uh, I came out with this new format, and, and who knows? Maybe you'll like it better. If you do, let me know in the comments. All right, Kevin leads the way, followed by Doug hitting driver as well. You can see the windmill turning in the in the distance. Here I go hitting driver. Followed by my partner Jim for these first six holes. Right, I got four hybrid hitting my second shot. All right, I got a pitching wedge punch, about 60 yards, chunk it. Of course. Of course, it's in the bunker. That's what that means. All right, hitting sand wedge. Get out. Got a bogey putt. No, I make double. But Jim hits a par putt for us to win the hole. The fifth hole is a short par four at 291 yards and it's the number 15 handicap. Hit the fairway and you'll have a good shot at birdie. Go for it and you have a good shot of winding up in one of those four bunkers that protect the green. All right, I'm going first, hitting driver after a pretty long wait, followed by Jim. There's a foursome with four caddies up there and uh, Followed by two twosomes. That's really the foursomes making the backup. All right, here goes Doug. Yeah. <clears throat> I know your back hurts, Kevin, but. Uh... <laughs> here goes Kevin as it gets to carry Doug. And the sketchers are squeaking. All right, I got an eight iron punch. Got a birdie putt. That's right, a birdie putt. It's long, but it's a birdie putt. Followed by Jim with a long birdie putt. Well, it looks good. It looks good. <laughs> my, my partner's on fire. All right. I've got a par putt. Let's see if I can roll it in, even though it doesn't matter. There we go. The six hole is a birdie opportunity. A short par five at 473 yards, number 11 handicap. Your second shot's critical as the fairway squeezes you. Be short and pitch on for your third shot or hit it long. Short shots of the green will likely wind up in a bunker. First up is Jim hitting driver. This is the sixth hole, my last chance to have Jim carry me. All right, I'm hitting driver. Hear the ocean in the background, or the North Sea, I guess it is. Here goes Kevin hitting driver. Here goes uh, Doug, Skittles. Here goes me with a three hybrid from the 
just off the fairway. Now here I got four hybrid in. I'm basically in the fairway, but I find this hump. It's hard to get a level lie here. All right, I'm in the trap. Get I get out. Kevin's got a birdie putt. Just by the hole. <laughs> just a bit outside. Here goes Jim. He's got a par putt. Come on. No. He makes bogey. I have a bogey putt to tie the hole. No, I make double. Kevin can win the hole with this putt, and he does. Number seven is known as Black Dog. Maybe this is what Led Zeppelin was singing about. A 367-yard par four, number seven handicap, featuring eight bunkers and a two-tiered green. All right, seventh hole. Doug goes first. We have new partners. He's playing with Jim. I'm up second, and uh, I'm playing with Kevin. Good shot. Right on the target line. Good shot, Park. Here goes Kevin, my partner, for the next six holes. Right. Here goes Jim. Wow. Perfect. Now I've got three hybrid from 185. I got a lob wedge. Now I've got a, a putt for par. I can tell you that uh, playing 36, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. And playing Trump first, I got a bogey putt. That wears you out. That course will wear you out. The eighth hole is 139 yard par three with a handicap of 17. It's the signature hole at Royal Aberdeen. The hole features 10 bunkers to uh, catch any shot that's just off hitting a narrow green. Depending on the wind, this hole can vary three or four clubs. Kevin hits first, followed by Jim, and then OMG. I think I hit four hybrid there. And Doug. Doug hits the bunker. Well, he gets another try in the bunker. And he gets this one out. Now I get my turn in the bunker. And I hit it, hit it out, and then I got yeah, a bad got break. Rolled down this road and way into this mess. So I'm hitting a lob wedge out of here. I'm really kind of pissed that I got in that spot. Another lob wedge. Uh, Kevin's got a putt. Give me a six. Let's talk about my triple here. I got a bad break, and I didn't shake it off. I mean, I just needed to get this on the green, and, and the last shot's done, and I hit another bad shot here. The ninth hole is a long par four at 436 yards, and it plays uphill, making it longer. It's the number five handicap. With the gorse on the left and the sand dunes on the right, stay right. Club up hitting into the green to account for the rise in elevation. This fairway has lots of bumps and bruises on it, so make sure you understand the lie that you're hitting from. Doug is going first, and he is taking off like a rabbit. I'm up next, hitting driver. Not bad. Followed by Jim. Jim and Doug are partners. That rental club he has, it makes a weird noise. I think it's a pig. Followed by uh, Kevin, my partner. I think his rental set was TaylorMade. I think they had their choice and he chose TaylorMade. Wow. Nice partner. All right, I've got three wood. Feet. Ugh. Ball above my feet. I've got a five iron off with some kind of little mound. Whoa, four. Almost kill somebody. Pitching wedge punch. All right, I got Texas wedge. I got a. I got a putt for double. Nope, that's a damn seven. All right, let's review my triple. You got to know your lie. This ball's above my feet, and I don't take that into account. And this one is uh, 
above my feet and my feet are uneven. So I really started to feel this is the equivalent of my 31st hole for the day and I'm feeling it. The 10th hole is a 338 yard par four with a blind tee shot. It's the number eight handicap. Consult your course guide to uh, pick your line off the tee. There's water running across the fairway, but at 295 yards, only the long hitters need to be worried about it off the tee. All right, Kevin's up first, hitting driver. He's got to be thinking, I carried Doug six, six holes, now I got to carry Trey. Let's see if I can do something. I got driver. I hit that one. Jim. And here I am hitting six iron from 145, just off the fairway. I'm on the green for a birdie putt. Birdie putt, y'all. There we go. Birdie. All right, let's have a birdie review. We read the good and the bad. I hit a plenty of club into the middle of the green, and then I hit a firm, confident putting stroke, and yeah. voila. Yeah. Birdie. The 11th hole is a par three, 159 yards, number 16 handicap. Consider taking an extra club to avoid the wind and the three bunkers protecting the front of the green. Once you're on the green, you'll realize that the undulation of the green is what protects this hole from par. Don't three putt. All right, after some weight, I'm hitting five iron off the tee, followed by Kevin. It looks like one of the groups in front of us has uh, dropped out due to the pace, probably. Hitting by Jim and then by Doug. I've got a Texas wedge here and a putt for par. But I make bogey. The 12th is a 474-yard par 5, number 4 handicap. Tee shot's wide open, so go ahead and pull out that top golf swing. The fairway gets tight, as you, so lay up about 100 yards, which is short of the bunkers, while the fairway still is a bit wide. This is the last hole of the second match, and Doug tees off first. And his partner, Jim, goes next. Followed by... Me, OMG, followed by Kevin. All right, I've got a three hybrid from LAW. And I miss the fairway and I have to just take my medicine and punch out. I got a three win. And I hit it OB. So I'm now in my pocket. Doug has an eagle chip. Two Driver off the deck, followed by Kevin with a birdie chip. There we go. Kevin makes par. Jim's got a birdie putt. And he makes par. All right, Doug has a, uh, a birdie putt to win the hole. And no, it's a push. The 13th is a 366-yard par 4, number 12 handicap. The tee shot is blind, giving the hole the name blind. The best line is to stay to the right side off the tee. There is trouble off the back, so don't go long. We switch partners in the back, and Doug, my partner, goes first. Followed by me. Kevin goes next. So Kevin and... Uh, Jim are partners for the rest of the round. All right, I got a four hybrid. Cut across it a bit. I got a gap wedge. All right, so I got an eight iron chip. Now I have a bogey putt. And I make it. Jim has a short putt to tie me. And he makes it. The 14th is a 382 yard par 4, number 2 handicap. The number 2 handicap is not what I needed at this point in the day. 
There's a dry creek running through the fairway. Lay up on it. When you come to the green, favor the right side. All right, Doug tees off first, followed by me, followed by Kevin, and then hitting cleanup is Jim. All right, I've got a three hybrid. I hit that okay. I got a nine iron punch from 70 yards. Oh. Uh, my brain is toast. It gives me a, a lob wedge against this uh, little... I don't know what you call it. My brain is make that wet toast. All right, now I got a lob wedge. I'm trying to hit it over this heads or historic wall or whatever the thing is. All right, Jim's got a putt for par. Oh, look at that. And he makes a bogey. I got a putt for double bogey. And no. The triple review, it's really just one mental lapse with this nine iron punch. Gets me in a bad position. And then I'm making a damn seven on the number two handicap. The 15th is a par four, 331 yards, number 14 handicap. Features another blind tee shot. Aim at the lighthouse for your line off the tee. As you get to the green, avoid the bunkers on the right. All right, Doug leads the way. Followed by me. If you look in the in the sky, we have some weather moving in. Kevin's up next. Followed by Jim. Alright, drop and hitting three. Lost my ball, took a penalty, hitting three with the three wood. Uh, that, <laughs> that says it all. I got three hybrid. Hitting a lob wedge. All right, putt for a double. Make a damn seven. Jim's got a putt. No. Nope. Doug's got a par putt, and he made All right. We are giving up at the 15. Had a group in front of us. It's getting dark, and uh, we are a wee bit tired. Even though we didn't play the hole, I'm going to give you a slight review here. That's 361 yard par four, number six handicap. Placed to the top of the hill. It's tricky. As you play uphill, but the green slopes front to back with trouble if you go long. The 17th is a par 3. 165 yards. Plays longish to a three-tier green. The prevailing winds tend to keep you out of trouble. Watch for the five bunkers protecting the green up front, but don't go long either. The 18th is a 426-yard par 4. Handicap 10. Most members play this as a par 5. The green is slightly raised and protected by the five bunkers. There are nine bunkers in total on this hole. What a shame I didn't get to play it. My rankings to date, I put Aberdeen three. Behind Cruden Bay and Castle Stewart, just edging out Trump. Trump is a better manicured course with flat lies in the fairway, but Royal Aberdeen is a more natural environment and a bit more playable as well. Out of gas is really an appropriate metaphor for how we are as a group. After playing 36 today, we played Trump first, and, and if you're going to play 36 in Aberdeen, don't play Trump as one of your courses. It uh, will really beat you up walking up and down to get out of those tee boxes. But our van almost ran out of gas, too, despite having a, a world authority on petroleum retail business in the car, we finally found a gas station before we ran out. We made it back to the hotel, but it was raining and nasty, and uh, there were no parking spots. In fact, we uh, parked in the handicapped spot, had dinner. I had the uh, sea bass. We got a long journey tomorrow, and I uh, should, really should go to bed and get some sleep before we have to get up and go in the morning. But no, 
Doug and I closed the bar, and we found out from some Irishmen there that you don't even have to stop drinking when the bar is closed. Pro tip here, if you just go to the front desk and you ask the uh, front desk attendant, he'll open up the bar and serve you another drink. Long day tomorrow. Drive to St. Andrews and uh, play 18 holes. Cheers, y'all.